CIA spy supposed to protect the world from evil abused women across the globe. A CIA officer who drugged, photographed and sexually assaulted nearly 30 women in postings around the world has been sentenced to 30 years in prison. Brian Jeffrey Raymond, a former White House intern, would lure women he met on dating apps including Tinder to his government leased flat and drug them while serving wine and snacks. The 48-year-old would then spend hours posing with his naked and unconscious victims before photographing and assaulting them. He was found to have a library of more than 500 images. Prosecutors said the horrific assaults date back to 2006 and tracked Raymond's career from postings in Mexico, Peru and other countries. It's safe to say he's a sexual predator. You are going to have a period of time to think about this, U.S. Senior Judge Colleen Collar Catelli said, imposing the full sentence prosecutors had requested in Washington. As part of the sentence, the judge also ordered him to pay $10,000 to each of his 28 victims. In court, around 12 of Raymond's victims who were identified only by numbers recalled how they had been deceived by a spy who was part of an agency that is supposed to protect the world from evil. One victim said Raymond seemed like a perfect gentleman when they met in Mexico in 2020, recalling only that they kissed. Unbeknownst to her, after she blacked out, he took 35 videos and close-up photos of her breasts and genitals. Another described suffering a nervous breakdown, and a third said she has nightmares of seeing herself dead after being shown photos of herself taken by Raymond, in which she said she looks like a corpse on his bed. Reading from a statement, Raymond told Judge Ms. Collar Catelli that he has spent countless hours contemplating his downward spiral. It betrayed everything I stand for and I know no apology will ever be enough. There are no words to describe how sorry I am. That's not who I am and yet it's who I became," he said. His lawyers had sought a more lenient sentence, blaming his quasi-military work at the CIA in the years following 9-11 that became a breeding ground for the emotional callousness and objectification of other people that enabled his years of preying on women. The sentencing comes as another veteran CIA officer faces charges in Virginia for allegedly reaching up a co-worker's skirt and forcibly kissing her during a drunken party in the office. A separate former CIA employee is also scheduled to face trial next month on charges he assaulted a woman with a scarf in a stairwell at the agency's headquarters in Langley, Virginia. The agency has publicly condemned Raymond's crimes thought to be one of the most egregious misconduct cases in the CIA's history and implemented sweeping reforms intended to keep women safe, streamline claims and more quickly discipline offenders. Hollywood pair in talks to invest in cricket team. Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney are reportedly in talks to buy shares in a cricket team as part of their latest foray into the world of sport. The Hollywood actors bought Wrexham AFC in 2020 and oversaw the club's return to the English Football League EFL for the first time in 15 years. The Red Dragons are now playing in League One, the third tier of English football, having won back-to-back -back promotions. Cardiff-based Welsh Fire plays in the 100, a 100-ball cricket tournament which was first launched in 2021. Chief Executive of Welsh Fire, Dan Cherry, has confirmed that contact has been made with the duo. I'm not sure what level those conversations are at. All I know is that they've made contact and there's some interest in the proposition, he said. Earlier this month, the England and Wales Cricket Board opened the process to secure private investment into the 100 ahead of the fifth edition of the tournament in 2025. As part of the process of selling franchises, the hosts of the eight teams in the 100 tournament will be given a 51% stake, which they can sell or keep. The remaining 49% in each side will be sold by the England and Wales Cricket Board ECB, to private investors. We're really proud of our Welsh heritage, Mr. Cherry said. And we've seen the fantastic work that Ryan and Rob have done in engaging football fans in North Wales and building that brand globally. We're open-minded about potential investment into Welsh Fire at the moment, and if Ryan and Rob are interested in having further conversations then it's obviously an exciting proposition for us. 
On Monday evening, Wrexham traveled to Birmingham for a fixture in front of a star-studded crowd. McElhenney was joined by Birmingham part owner and former NFL player Tom Brady along with Brady's friend, former England midfielder David Beckham. Food container firm Tupperware files for bankruptcy in the U.S. Tupperware, the maker of food storage containers, has filed for bankruptcy in the U.S. The firm, which was founded 78 years ago, said it was seeking approval to find a buyer for the business as part of attempts to protect the brand. The American company is mostly known for its Tupperware parties, which became hugely popular in the 1960s and 70s as people sold its products, which were mostly made of plastic, to friends, family and neighbors in their home. The historic brand was also reportedly once used by the late Queen. Chief Executive Laurie and Goldman said, over the last several years, the company's financial position has been severely impacted by the challenging macroeconomic environment. Whether you are a dedicated member of our Tupperware team, sell, cook with, or simply love our Tupperware products, you are a part of our Tupperware family. We plan to continue serving our valued customers with the high-quality products they love and trust throughout this process. Tupperware Brands Corporation said starting bankruptcy proceedings was the best path forward after exploring numerous strategic options to stay afloat. Last year, the troubled firm said it was trying to secure financing from investors as it was at risk of going bust. Founded in 1946, Tupperware was developed by Earl Tupper in Massachusetts and grew rapidly as a solution to reducing food waste. But in recent times, it has increasingly struggled to compete with rival firms making containers which are cheaper and better for the environment. Tupperware sales improved during the early days of the COVID pandemic, but overall they have been in steady decline since 2018. Its products currently include more sustainable materials such as glass and stainless steel, while some are made with plastic waste. <laughs> DNA stored on crystal could bring back humanity after extinction. British scientists have stored DNA information for an entire human on a crystal, which could be used to bring back humanity if we become extinct. The team from the University of Southampton's Optoelectronics Research Center ORC, used lasers to inscribe the data on a 5D crystal, which they said can survive for billions of years. Unlike other storage formats, it does not degrade over time. In a statement, the university described the crystal equivalent to fused quartz as one of the most chemically and thermally durable materials on Earth. It can withstand massive forces, extreme temperatures and exposure to cosmic radiation. The team at Southampton, led by Professor Peter Kazansky, used ultra-fast lasers to imprint data about the human genome representing the entire set of DNA instructions found in a cell. A spokesman for the university said, unlike marking only on the surface of a 2D piece of paper or magnetic tape, this method of encoding uses two optical dimensions and three spatial coordinates to write throughout the material, hence the 5D in its name. The team hope it could be used in the future to record the genomes of endangered plant and animal species which are faced with extinction. But there is a catch. It is not currently possible to synthetically create humans, plants and animals using genetic information alone. Professor Kazansky said the longevity of the 5D crystal meant the information would be available if DNA advances were ever made. He said, we know from the work of others that genetic material of simple organisms can be synthesized and used in an existing cell to create a viable living specimen in a lab. The 5D memory crystal opens up possibilities for other researchers to build an everlasting repository of genomic information from which complex organisms like plants and animals might be restored should science in the future allow. The crystal includes a visual key to show details about what data is stored inside and how it could be used by a future intelligence species or machine to create a human.
The key shows the universal elements, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen, the four bases of the DNA molecule, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine, with their molecular structure, their placement in the double helix structure of DNA, and how genes position into a chromosome, which can then be inserted into a cell. The crystal has been stored in the Memory of Mankind archive, a special time capsule within a salt cave in Hallstatt, Austria. 5D memory crystals can store up to 360 terabytes of information, and the format was awarded the Guinness World Record for the most durable data storage material in 2014. New Grumpy Fish Species Discovered in the Red Sea A new type of fish described as grumpy by scientists has been found in the Arabian Red Sea. The species scientifically named Suviota ethon has been dubbed the grumpy dwarf goby by researchers who found the fish among coral reefs in the sea, living in small holes and crevices. In a study published last week, researchers said the name refers to the fish's apparent grumpy and rather unhappy appearance, primarily due to the extremely upturned mouth position. The dwarf part of its name refers to its size of under 2 cm and goby to the family of fish it belongs to, gobiidae, which comprises of some 2,000 species of bony fish. The team of researchers from the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology and the University of Washington revealed the grumpy dwarf goby to the world in a study published in Pensoff Suki's journal. The first of the fish was discovered in the Farrison Banks in Saudi Arabia, with additional specimens later found near Thule on the Red Sea. It was researcher Victor Nunes Payman who first found them during a diving expedition to explore the coral reef fish diversity. Initially, the researchers thought they had rediscovered a type of dwarf goby found in 1972. But it was the grumpy dwarf goby's angry appearance that set it apart. It appears to be a relatively rare species, the researchers said, which is likely why it remained undiscovered until now. Lucia Pomboiora, who gave the species its name, said, I imagine in its own tiny world, it is a fearsome predator. Its grumpy expression and large canines certainly make it look the part, despite its small size. <laughs> UK and allies issue cyber attack warning over China-backed botnet. The UK and its Five Eyes allies have issued a cyber attack warning over a China-backed botnet of more than 260,000 compromised devices. Businesses have been urged by the National Cyber Security Center NCSC, and its allies in the US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand to protect their devices from possible attacks. It says a company based in China, with links to the country's government, has created and wields a botnet of more than 260,000 compromised devices around the globe. Botnets are large networks of internet-connected devices that have been infected with malware. As a result, they can be controlled by the group and used to carry out malicious attacks without the owner's knowledge. Most commonly, they are used to carry out distributed denial of service DDoS, attacks, which flood a website with traffic with the aim of knocking it offline. But they can also be used to deliver malware. Compromised devices can include routers, webcams, and CCTV cameras among other internet-connected devices. Around half of the company's devices, 126,000, were said to be in the US, with around 8,500 nodes in the UK. Firms were urged to check if the security of their devices was adequate, noting that this botnet poses a particular threat to older equipment and devices whose security is not up to date. Paul Chichester, NCSC Director of Operations, said, Botnet operations represent a significant threat to the UK by exploiting vulnerabilities in everyday internet-connected devices with the potential to carry out large-scale cyber attacks. He added, whilst the majority of botnets are used to conduct coordinated DDoS attacks, we know that some also have the ability to steal sensitive information. 
That's why the NCSC, along with our partners in Five Eyes countries, is strongly encouraging organizations and individuals to act on the guidance set out in this advisory, which includes applying updates to internet-connected devices to help prevent their devices from joining a botnet.